<laughs> okay. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you to the uh, Discipleship University. This is Apostle Albury. We want to welcome everyone in tonight um, where we labor that Christ be formed in you and where you come to major in Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, we want to uh, ask you to share, you know, share and let someone, um, you know, chime in tonight that we may be able to grow and increase in the word. But the Bible says we grow in, as babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God that we may grow there by, that we may grow therein. And we grow by having a desire for the milk of the word of God. Amen? Amen. That word is the word is the word. And we've been studying this book. Um, I hope everyone got it if you if one here um, that you that you really got the book because it is a great a great read and learning about being in the presence of God. Amen. And understanding what it actually means to be in the presence of God. Uh, his presence is in the midst of us. And I always, I'm going to tell you what's interesting about this. I, I don't really, and I think anyone that truly love God doesn't want to do anything without God's presence being in the midst. Amen. Especially in a, in a, when you're in a fallen world. When the world is uh, riveted with sin and, and darkness, you don't want to do anything without God's presence because if there is, if there is light and there is darkness there is warfare so you want god to go before you the bible says he go before us to make the crooked road straight amen? amen and we want to do everything that we do in the presence of god to me it's like doing the bible says god is light and doing everything in the presence of light causes you to have the ability to see when you can see you can make some you can make the right decisions and lead and be led in a way that will bring god glory amen, amen. because ignorance derives from the word darkness and then if you can't see and you all in your feelings, and that's what we, and I think, and that's one of the biggest things that we are battling with today, I believe, in the kingdom of God, are people, of, are many of us are resorting to our feelings, I feel this, well, I feel God said this, I feel this, I feel that, and you know, it's interesting when you, uh, God showed me one time a, um, a demonstration about feelings, and he, he, he uh, I was walking in a room that was like pitch dark and the room was dark and I didn't know where the light was. So what I began to do was feel around, you know, you feel around because you don't know what you're entering into. You can't see where you're going. So you move in your feelings. And a lot of times when it comes to relationships, when it comes to many different things that affect our life, we begin to enter in on um, what we feel. Mm. I don't know about you all, but I know when I was not saved and I was not walking in the light, walking in the spirit, walking in holiness or righteousness and walking and being led by the spirit of God. Um, the things that I felt didn't last a long time. They only last as long as to when I begin to feel something else. Anybody that's been there, you know, saying you you were feeling strong about something and then you got aggravated and your aggravation began to change what you felt about that. Or you were feeling uh, loving for someone, but they did they did something you didn't like, and your dislike changed what you begin to feel about that. You know, so you we know we we want to be those people that are um, that are rooted and grounded in the Word of God and the Spirit of God, and I like to say the anointing of God. So tonight we are on studying the anointing. Amen. So I'm going to ask. Uh, you already got to read the word. You got to read. Well, I'm going to ask you to pray. <laughs> Will you pray, Miss Jess? I appreciate it. I know you're going to just light up. Bow our heads, close our eyes if you're able. Stay focused on the road if you're still driving. <laughs> thank you. Heavenly Father, we just give you the glory today, Father God. We just thank you, Lord God, that you have given us this day, Lord God, to be in the midst of you, Father God, to be in your presence, Father God. We ask, Lord God, that you just clear any distractions, Father God, any phone calls, text messages, anything that will take our minds or our Take us away from your word today, the message that you want us to hear today, Father God. We just ask, Father God, that you just clear the path, Lord God. Let our hearts be open, our minds be open, Lord God, to receive your word today, Lord God. Let it fall on good grounds, Father God. Let the word, Lord God, pierce our hearts, Father God. We just ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we are on page five for those who have a book. So I'm with you. I know we started on it, but I'm going to have, uh-huh. Yeah. I know we started on it. I'm going to have, um, well, I'm going to start reading. I have the certain question I'll tell you, Murray, for you, okay? I'm going to start, we want just to go over some of what we went over. But the anointing is the, my presence. I want us to understand that the, the, as, as the, the writer of this book begins to explain God's anointing as God's presence. Amen? The presence. Uh, making myself available to my people through the old outpouring of my Holy Spirit. And God's presence is his spirit. And, and how many of us know that the scripture tells us, we, and I'm going to tell you, we, 
What I love about the word of God, it never contradicts itself. It always complements itself. It always, because watch this, the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Liberty. Liberty. There is freedom. So that would make sense if the creator, uh, he who created all things and all things were made by him, when he is present and you, and you are dwelling in the midst of that presence, you are dwelling in the midst of freedom. Uh, matter of fact, if light is shining, then I'm dwelling in the presence of that which caused me not to stumble. Amen? If light is, because stumbling, because I'm walking in darkness, because I cannot see. But if I'm walking in light, then there's a chair set in front of me. The little, the tr and, I, and, I, and I truly believe this, that God's presence begins to expose the enemy's trickery and deception and deceit. God will allow you to be able to see. And that's why I know a lot of times when, that we begin, well, even when we choose relationships without the presence of God, it's funny. We go in our feelings, can't see it. Then when it don't work out, we want to blame God. Amen. We go in our feelings, can't see. I, that's why I believe that truly before you enter into any relationship, you must enter into a relationship with he who is the beginner and creator of all relationships. Why? So you can be able to see because one weapon, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you, I truly believe that why God is really creating this study and awakening his sons and daughters to his presence. Because and I spoke on this on one day last week or the week before that God allowed me to see. And this was, it was, this thing came out of the earth. I, I, it was, a, it was, a, it was a creature that came out. Of, it broke through to it. It didn't just come out. It broke through on the earth and it was very colorful. I'm looking at it, right? I'm looking at this thing right through. It was very colorful. It had many, it was, but it was, it was, a, it was a, an animal, but it was very colorful, but it broke through the earth. And later when I asked God, what was that all about? He told me it was the spirit of deception. And I thought, okay, God, if it's the spirit of deception, why is it, why was it so colorful? It says, and God began to show me because it's, it, it wants to present itself as being appealing. The spirit of deception, the spirit of Satan and deception desires to present itself in an appealing manner. You know what I'm saying? Appealing to what? Lust of your flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. He wants to appeal to speak. The Bible says that, this, that Satan is a wolf trying to appeal, trying to come as a, a sheep. He wants to, now, when something is very colorful and beautiful, you it, it catches your attention. It's very appealing until you realize it's not what you think it is. Amen? And God said, if it was possible, that even the very elect would be fooled. He said, if. That word, if, is a word of condition. I'm glad you say, I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I'm in that condition. You might hear that you're in that condition. And I think one of the keys to being in that condition is to be in the presence of God. If you are in the presence of God, you're not going to be fooled because one of, one of the presence of God is God is spirit. One of the presence of God is being in the presence of God that he is spirit. But the Bible says those who worship him should worship him with spirit and in truth. Another presence of God, the Bible says he is the light of the world. He is light. Jesus said, I am the light. I am the life and the light to all men. So he is the light and the light. He is the light and light to all men. So if you are in the presence of light, you're not going to be deceived. Amen. One says that, uh, that he is love. Oh, my God. I love this one. God is love. So if you are in the presence of love, why would you be deceived by fake love if you're in the presence of love? Because true love will show you fake love. Amen. But what we have seen and this in, in one in one reason why this is great revival when God is like staring up his children. What we are seeing are people who will say they are. They are walking with God, but yet they are constantly finding themselves in situations that reveal they can't see. And you may say, well, that's, why would that be a big deal that the children of God who are called to be in the image and aptness of God are constantly finding themselves in situations where they can't see? Uh, because people are supposed to be following you out of darkness. You're supposed to be, you're supposed, we're supposed to be a representation of God himself. We are supposed to be the anointed ones. We are supposed to be the ones who are anointed by the presence of God, the spirit of God. Amen. So if I call myself to be anointed by the presence of God and the word tells me to be, a, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. The Bible tells me that I am sealed by the spirit of God and his spirit is brand with my spirit and it cries out, Abba. Amen. Amen. Romans 5, 5 says that the Holy Ghost is poured in our hearts. By, the love of God is being poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So love is being poured in our hearts. We are being led by the word. We're being, we're, being, we're being sealed by the spirit. We have all these attributes and promises that are coming in, in the anointing of God. And yet, if we are called to be the light, and what does light have to do with darkness? Unless it's that reprove. Reprove means to expose. And to expose, not to condemn, but to bring one out of then if we keep stumbling, if we keep uh, 
if we can't be faithful to reveal the image of God, then how, if the saved of a scarcely in position, how the unsaved, how are the unsaved going to get out of the world if we are not out of the world? Does it make sense? We, we who are called to be the light. So God is causing people to be, to understand what does it really mean to be in the presence of God? Because being in the presence of God doesn't just mean being in no church. You can be in the church building and not be in the presence of God. Amen. You can have a dynamic man of God and you yourself be not in the presence of God. Amen. So we, 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 we want to make sure that we understand it because we don't want to be deceived. Because many are being deceived. I'm, I'm here. I'm telling you this. What God has revealed, I know this to be so many, not you, me. And that when, when the Bible says there's going to be a great falling away in the last days, that's because people are going to be deceived. Some are going to fall away and not even know they're falling away. When, think about it, Matthew 7, when they said, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We did many wonders. He said, I never knew you. That's great deception. Come on. That's, that's the highest level of deception to believe that you are in a place to find out later that you were never in that place. To, come on. That's like believing in a relationship that somebody loved you. Somebody loved you and it was going to be there for you and they care about you. You find out they never loved you at all. They were never there for you at all. And yet you invested everything in believing that they love you and their whole agenda was simply just to use you or abuse you. And that's what Satan does. His, his characteristics are to kill, steal, and destroy, but he does it through deception. So God says, I have to wake my people up to my presence because in my presence, uh, Satan is destroyed. My God, the anointing does what? Destroy the yoke. Amen. We look at here, Isaiah 10, 26. Defining the anointing as the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. The anointing, the presence of God that's upon you and I, the cause of that when we are in the presence of God, and the presence of God is upon your life, it has is a burden removing. Come on now. So that means when I'm in the presence of God, and the presence of God is with me, and the spirit of God is with me and abiding in me, and I'm in it, then I have power to remove. It's the power that's dwelling in me and about me has power to remove the burden. Amen. It is a burden movement. It is, it is anointed. It's, it, destroy, it destroys the power. It destroys the yoke. So the question is, when we are in the presence of God, y'all got to get this. Satan cannot, deception, and Satan cannot progress in the presence of God. That's why the Bible says this. Um, when, he, when, when, uh, when Peter, he said, upon this rock shall I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. You got to understand, so the spirit of deception cannot prevail against the presence of God. Oh, I wish we can get there. We got to get this. I want you to understand, the spirit that has been released on the land, the spirit of, the because he said, the Bible tells us that upon this church that the gates of hell cannot prevail, meaning they cannot overtake it. The pre, and, and what we got to understand and what we got to get down if you want to be in a place of safety, if you want to be in a place of victory, then you need to be in the presence of God under the anointing of God. Amen. You need to know that you are the anointed one. Anointed by what? By the spirit of God. Where is the, what does the spirit of God do? Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Why? Because why, why is there liberty? Because why? It's defining the anointing as a burden removing and a yoke destroying. The truth, how many you know truth destroys the burden of life? And many, of, and many of us, what we didn't understand is that when we weren't serving God, we were serving Satan. Amen. And in serving Satan, we were serving, the Bible says that Satan was a, Satan is a murderer and a liar from the beginning. His whole kingdom is built off of the world system. Oh, we're going we're gonna to get this tonight. The world system in which we all were plugged into was a system that was built off lies and deception. It, when you have a system that says that you're going to be somebody when you make money, that success and notoriety, that makes you someone. That is a flaw in a lying system. That's why when many obtain the money or the identity, they still begin to use things. They still plug into a system and say, well, this is not enough. I need alcohol. This is not enough. I need more money. This is not enough. I don't care how fine she is. I need more women. I need more men. They are plugged into a system that says, if you obtain this, you're going to be complete. But then that same system will say, well, that ain't enough. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, my God, look at that. The same system that says you need it is the same system that says when you get it, it's not enough. And God wants to unplug you. He used, oh my, he sent his son to unplug us from that system, to plug you back into the kingdom. And the kingdom that you are plugged into is saying to you that you, we, 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 we found out in reading the book um, that, that when, we, when we read about, uh, I want to talk about, I want to say when the, uh, the, the children of Israel were going into the promised land and, and Caleb and, jo, uh, Caleb and Joseph, Joshua said that we are well able. We are plugged into a system now in the kingdom that you point, you got to point yourself, your finger to yourself and say, I am well able. See, they were plugged. They had another spirit. Amen. Ten of the ten of the spies of Israel had that spirit of the world. What's we want? We want we want the, the, the land. For, we want the, we want the land uh, overflowing of milk and honey. But we are free, and we see ourselves, but just as grasshoppers in our own eyes. We don't see ourselves as significant. We don't see ourselves as valuable. But those who have been unplugged from the world system and the world try to give you an identity, it's funny, the same world to give you an identity will crush it soon you do something. You, anybody never notice that? The same world that say you're the man, you make one mistake, that same world will eat you up and spit you out and make you want to commit suicide because they know, because the world that made you feel like you're a man took away or you being the man. Mm. The same world that made Mike Tyson the greatest boxer in the world was the same world that told me what number of garbage and number of animals. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But, but the kingdom, amen? The kingdom, the anointed kingdom where God is present. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we become anointed by the spirit of God, and that spirit of God, my God, it has the power to destroy the yoke. And that spirit of God is taking you and I from glory to glory to glory. Amen. So I want us to get that. I want us to understand that. That's why he says the anointing is the anointing is my presence. I make myself available to my people through the outpouring of my Holy Spirit. I and my spirit are one. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there I am. Or I am the great I am. My Holy Spirit has been released upon the earth. From the very beginning of creation, he is my agent for all that I do. He is the energy and the power and the accomplishing of my word, accomplishing, accomplishing my word. I am my, I am my word, and I am Jesus, the, the author and perfecter of your faith. Mm. I have sent my word, I have sent my word forth from the beginning to make my heart known that I might be loved, trusted, and obeyed. Whenever I send my word, I send my Holy Spirit. When I'm sorry, I send my Holy Spirit with it. It goes out from me as me to accomplish my will. My will is my word. It is my testimony. And how many of you know when we obey the word that you have a testimony because the word of God fulfilled in you what God established you to be before the foundation of the world. Amen. Your testimony, your testimony is connected to what the word brought you out of. Because the word came to fulfill in you. And when God said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. Amen. And the word of God has been sent through Christ, who is the visible image of the invisible God. What? When we believe what? To begin to produce in us according to Romans 8, 9, 8, 29. I foreknew you, predestined you be conformed into the image of my son. Amen. So the word is producing in you and I the image of who God is. And when you and I begin to walk in that image, that image who God is has the power to destroy the yoke. Amen. It has the power. When you and I begin to walk in holiness and truth, we begin to walk in who we were designed to be before the foundation of the world. See, the things that you accomplish don't make you. You were already made in the image of God. The things that you accomplish and how you accomplish it reveals who you are connected to. Amen. It ain't, see, my job don't make me. It's how I do my job that reveals who I'm, who I'm connected to and who I belong to. Amen. Marriage don't make me. It's how I function and operate in marriage that reveals who I, who, who, who I, who I belong to, who, who is my daddy. He said, whomever you yield your members to, that's your dad. So God it's, it's extremely important that we understand the anointing. It's extremely important that we understand the power of God that dwells in us 
that dwells in you, that dwells about you, because that power that now when you under, when we understand the anointing and we understand the being in the presence of God and we understand when we are sent for, you are never sent outside of the anointing. You're sent with the presence of anointing. Y'all got to get there. So that's why when you go, if God has anointed you as his daughter or his son, now what's interesting, you may operate in different offices as but the, uh, the offices does not solidify your anointing. It's just where you work in your anointing. In other words, you may be an evangelist and an evangelist, you are, your anointing is not, um, you are empowered as a son and the sonship power you have now, what? Because the anointing of God, what? Destroys the yoke, right? But the assignment you have is as an evangelist. So now you go out to win the loss. But because you are anointed, people get delivered. Amen. As a pastor, people get delivered. Even as an apostle, different, whatever office you walk in, the anointing, I want us, we got to get this. The anointing is the sonship. That's why he told, that's why he told um, when he when they asked him, who do men say that I am? Jesus asked him why? Because he wanted them to understand the anointing that was supposed to solidify his church. And, and Peter says, thou art the Christ. That word Christ means what? Anointed. Somebody got to talk to me. That word Christ means what? Anointed. And the anointing Christ. does what? Destroy the Destroys the yoke. He's saying that thou art the Christ. Now watch what. But what was, because when he came, when David was anointed, when he anointed David, David was anointed as what? King. King. David was anointed as king. Uh, in the new in, 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 in New Testament, Jesus was anointed as son. Because soon he says, Thou art the Christ, the anointed one. Then he says, the son of the living God. What? So the power in which he was anointed was as, as a son. The son is the power of the living God. Everybody understand. God get it. So when you don't, that's why Satan desire is to challenge your identity. Hmm. He challenges your identity. And if Satan wants to you to be confused about who you are. Yes. He wants you to be confused about who you are. Because when you don't really know who you are, you go through life and everybody telling you who you are. And when that person no longer wants to say that's who you are anymore, you lose your mind because you tied all your life into what they said who you are. Mm -hmm. If you found there are people who say, say your job make you who you are. So when you got fired, people jumped off and people jumped out of buildings. People killed themselves because there were people, man, your job is who you are. So there are police officers who, they, what, 30 years, they was a police officer. And when they stopped being police, they blew their brains out because why? They believed that their job was who they are. When they no longer was able to do their job no more, they figured I don't need to live no more. Some people believe, well, money is who I am. So when they don't have no money, they don't feel like they nobody. So they'll do anything to get money. Why? Because that money makes them feel like who they are. Satan will always try to attach your identity to something that is temporal. Why? So when he take it, you lose you. One thing he will attach your identity to is the, the lust of your flesh. Because if you believe how somebody sex you, when somebody touch you, make you feel special, then the bottom line, all somebody do is reject you and you feel like you just, you ain't nobody. You feel like you nothing. And then when you feel like you nothing, all Satan do next is to tell you, well, if that person don't want to make you feel like something, then go over here. They'll make you feel like something. And you'll start, you'll start accepting anything just for somebody to make you feel like something. But see, I want to be accepted to the anointing, to spirit. The spirit of God accepted you to the eternity. Oh, same thing. I'm glad I got one person. The spirit of God, he, he, he brought you and connected you. He disconnected you from the world, but connected you to the spirit in the kingdom of eternity. Oh my God, y'all get that. When you accepted Christ and the identity that he gave you, you can't lose it or nobody can't take it from you. No church, if God has anointed you as a son and they put you out the church because you stood on the word of God, that church, they may be able to, they may say, well, you know what? We don't want, we, are, we ordained you as a bishop, but we now disqualify you as a bishop. Well, you can't disqualify me as a son because they tried to get to Jesus. They tried to disqualify Jesus because Jesus would not attach himself to them. So they were like, no, that, you know, when, and when, when people don't, what's funny about the fakeness of the world, when you don't line up with it, it will try to disconnect you, disown you, make you feel like nothing. The same, like, I'm, I'm going to keep on the way. The spirit of deception is so funny because once it gets you, it's your job, it's job is to kill and steal and destroy you. Have you ever let, you ever connected to, have you ever connected yourself to something that you felt loved you or you? 
you thought was going to be with you. And if everything you connected yourself to at the end was trying to destroy you, kill you, and get rid of you. Mm -hmm. And you know what's funny with some people? They proceed because they are deceived. They connect that behavior with love. And the reason why, why it's easy for them to connect with love, because when you live in a world whose system is plugged into that perversion, it's hard for you to believe that's not true when the movie says true. When the music says true, when everything says it's true, and you watching the movies and you getting all into and you all into Facebook, you all into um Instagram or TikTok, and these people who are feeding this knowledge a lot of are feeding into a world system, and some of them are saying Christ, but what they're saying Christ on the outside. Remember, I told you Christ, Satan's job is to to be a deceiver. So one of his greatest things is to make you perceive. That perceive that this person is from God, but speak and say things that are contrary to God. Mm -hmm. mm. No, but see, God wants His people in His presence so He can be able, so you won't be deceived. God's children will not be deceived. Why? Because they will operate under the anointing. Amen. And the anointing reveals the presence of God, has you in the presence of God. It's hard to deceive somebody who walked, who's who's in. It's hard to deceive somebody who's walking in the light, unless they just like to stay in the darkness. I mean, I see it. It reminds me of the movie Matrix, that the first one, when the guy said, "I know this meat ain't real," but he put it in my. In other words, I would still want to be deceived. Mm. I know something ain't real. I know this girl don't love me, but I just. I just want to be deceived. I know this person don't love me. I just want to be deceived. I know this person not going to stick with me. I just like being deceived. Because why? Satan told you, if you don't have that, don't nobody love you. See, he always like to convince you that you're by yourself, even though God said, I'll never leave you. Because once you believe that you're by yourself, you're kind of subject to do anything at that point. If you're like, so somebody can accept you. Or somebody to be with you. Amen? Hmm. I want us to go. We're gonna so I'm, we're gonna go to. Um, I'm trying to remember. Anybody remember where we stopped at? Oh, I don't know where we're gonna start. We're gonna actually start on. Uh, let's start with say wherever he went. Yeah, okay, wherever he went on the next page on page six. Starting there, wherever he wherever he went. We're gonna start with wherever he went. The second uh, sentence. Oh, where he went, that um, well, where the map? All right. Yeah. Where he went, that anointing went with him. I went with him, for I was the anointing upon him. That tells us that that tell you wherever you go, whatever the anointing that God's placed on you, gonna go with you. Amen. Yeah. If God has anointed you as a daughter or a son, then you are never alone and never not moving in the power of a daughter or son, wherever you go. Mm -hmm. hmm. Amen. He, he's talking about, he's actually talking about uh, with Mervis readings, he's talking about this, the, the anointing that was upon, uh, I believe, Elijah. And uh, the anointing, even the anointing they're talking about on John the Baptist, that they had a repentant, a repentant to cause the people to repent. And wherever they went, the power of God upon them when they preached it caused people to become be convicted and move to a place of repentance. Amen. And, and I believe it was funny because if this be true, which it is true, the anointing on our life with, of sonships and daughterships should cause people to want along to, be, to want to be connected to God. As far. You say what? Yes, it should along for people to want to be connected to God. Why? Because the anointing that we have is the anointing, it's the spirit of God. And Jesus said, I came, Jesus said. It's just what Jesus says in his word. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no way back to the Father. So the anointing on your life should draw somebody who want to be connected to your Father. My God. The anointing on your life should draw. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what I thought was funny about that. I'm going to read you something that um, God gave me to write. And I thought it was so... Just give me, give me a moment to get there. And I, I want y'all to... I wrote this down. Sons and daughters of God, live a life in Christ that will cause the unbeliever to want to know who your father is that raised you up. Live a life in Christ 
that will cause the unbeliever to want to know who your father is that raised you up. Amen? Because I mean, you know, people look at sometimes and say, I, I, people can tell, I, I, I want to know your parents. I want to know who raised you. See, Jesus, the same spirit that raised up Christ, come on, y'all. The same spirit that raised up Christ is now in you, raising you up. The same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, that mastered death itself. Amen? That, that everything the enemy threw at it, it was raised up. That same spirit now abides in you that causes you sons and daughters. So don't, never let the, don't, don't ever let the enemy convince you that you don't have an anointing of power to crush that which has tried to make you feel like you're nothing, that's going to try to hold you down, that's going to try to destroy you. Because the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead is the spirit that now abides with you and in you. That's raising you up. And taking you from glory to glory to glory. Amen. The same spirit. That same spirit abides in you. The anointing. So when somebody sees. That's why I, I, I mean, somebody sees your behavior. Somebody sees how you talk and how you love people. They were like, well, who, who your father is? They ought to want to know God. They ought to want to know your father through your life. If you are in the presence of God. Because I find out. Whatever you are in the presence in is going to birth in you what you're in the presence in. If you are in the presence of God, how in the world is that you never have joy and you are in the presence of he who gives you joy on speaker? How is it that you never have peace, but you are in the presence who give you peace that passes all understanding? How is it that you are in the presence of he who was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy, but you always talk about the enemy destroying you? How is it that we can be in the presence of him who destroyed the works of the enemy, but always feel like the enemy is destroying us? How is this possible? That, 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 it, I'm just being honest with us. Something I, Sometimes our life don't line up with who we call ourselves connected to. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you, don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you that the enemy is not going to try you. The Bible said Jesus was tempted on every side, but he sinned not. Amen. So we have an advocate in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That means that there are going to be things that are going to come at you that desire to destroy you. But your advocate in Christ is going to teach you. See, God is not going to remove some, oh my God. He is not going to remove some battles. He's going to teach you how to conquer them. Y'all get this. God, so what you're going through right now is just, uh, it ain't nothing but sharpening you. Because God has to teach you to walk like you were designed to walk like him. So therefore, God will allow fear to come at you. Why? So you can understand he never gave you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So what does that mean? When, I, when I'm confronted with when I'm confronted with fear, fear is going to get power, love, and a sound mind. When I'm confronted with heaviness, God will allow you to feel heaviness. Why? Because when, when you feel heaviness, it is confronted with praise. Because God said, I have given you the garment of praise for heaviness. Amen. When you are confronted with lies and deception, God has given you the spirit of truth and holiness. Whatever the enemy has, God is, whatever weapon Satan has, God has mastered it. Amen. He has mastered. And he's been trying to get man since man has fallen to master the very things that would bring man to a point where he'll be separated from God. He even told Cain, he said, Cain, sin crouching at the door. He said, master it. Now, and you say, well, how was he telling his Cain? How was he telling Cain to master? What was the anointing? What was the anointing that he gave Cain to master sin? All you got to do is read the scripture. When Cain, he told Cain, when Cain got angry with God, and, and God looked at Cain's countenance because God was not pleased with Cain off him. He said to Cain, he gave Cain a word. See, some of us don't, we, we got to realize that everything that God is saying is connected. So when he told Cain to master sin, Cain had already sat under the word that would have gave him the power. He would have never told Cain to master something that he had not given him a word to master. So when you say, well, what, what did he give Cain to make the word? When he told Cain, Cain, do thou not do 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 thou not know it? If thou do it good, thou shalt receive it good. He told Cain, Cain, if thou do it good. In other words, if you do what I tell you, that you're going to receive it. So he gave. So when he told Cain to master sin, he is saying, don't go out and do witness. Because if you do it good, you're going to bless. You will master the enemy. But Cain went out from the God and did not do it good. He murdered his brother. He did more wicked. 
But Cain, that means Cain did not obey the word which would have anointed him to overcome the thought to murder his brother. Cain had what he needed to overthrow. Cain did receive what he needed to, over, to overthrow that thought that caused him to murder his brother. He just chose to reject it. Just like every one of us in this room, we have what we needed. Everyone that's listening to me, if you are sitting under the word of God, the anointed word of God, where in, in, um, and I love, I love what he said when he says, um, hold on, let me get there. For, uh, Corinthians second chapter, when he says, for he says, I'm gonna read this. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received the ministry, we think not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Not handling the word of God deceitfully. Remember I told you that there has been a spirit of deception went up, but don't handle the word. In other words, don't know the word and God and start playing with it. Don't handle it. What is the way of handling the word of God deceitfully? Using it to benefit you. Using it as in a manner to benefit you and not glorify God. The word of God brings glory to God. That's why the next verse, at the, at the, very, the next chapter we're going to right after the anointing is glory. Why? Because the anointing of God brings glory to God. And when you operate in the anointed word of God, in the power of God, it brings glory to God. Not you. You did. Mm. The Bible says, no longer I live. But the life I now live, I live in faith in Christ Jesus who gave his life for me. I must, uh, watch this. Let me show you here. Just if I go, if I, if I go a little higher, well, let me go a little up, three. But even if, but I'm going to quote it, but even unto this day, when Moses is read and the veil is upon their hearts, nevertheless, when it shall turn, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. The veil is taken away because you all have turned to the Lord. Say amen. And the Bible says, because you have turned to the Lord, the, the spirit of God, he says, the, the, the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty who you have turned to has power because why he's anointed and the anointing the, the, uh, the finding of the anointing is the burden removing yoke destroying power of god the one that you turn to is the anointed christ the anointed one he is the son of god and you and i have turned to christ in first corinthians 9 says that we have been called into the fellowship of jesus christ you have been called into the fellowship of the word god with me i'm not going too fast you're called into the fellowship of the word of God, which is doing what in your life? It's removing burdens and destroying yokes. Why? A free person, free people, free people. If you're not free, you can't free nobody. But how did I get free? I turned. Come on. I repented. The word repent means to turn. Turn from who? Turn from what? Turn from you. Turn from the wickedness of this world. I turned to the Lord, the anointed one. And in my fellowship with Christ, is what producing in me the image in the likeness of who I was designed to be before the foundation of the word of God, the world of God. So why do I love God? Why am I eating the word? Why? Because I'm eating. Why? Because I want to know who I, I want to know who I'm called to be. I want to know the power I'm called to walk in. I'm tired of walking around trying to find my identity in stuff that when it is taken, I feel lost. I'm tired of walking around feeling broken. I'm tired of walking around feeling used. I'm tired of walking around just wanting somebody to make me feel good and nothing to make me feel good. When they don't want me, when they, when they don't want to feel good anymore, I feel left out, rejected, despised, hated, angry, envy, envy. Right. I'm tired of this. I want to know who I am. So now he's knocking at the door and say, let me come in so I can teach you who you are. And how do we know he want to teach you who you are? Watch this. I'm going now. I'm going back down. But having renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in the craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but but by manifestation of the truth. Somebody say manifestation of the truth. Manifestation of the truth. The word of God. It's the manifestation of the truth. Y'all, we have to understand something. Either, either, either the word of God is true or it is not true. There is no middle. There is no, I, uh, there is no choice. It's like, you know, people to my, the choice, the choice, the cho I heard, I was watching the movie, my daughter was watching the movie. The, 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 the movie said that choice is an illusion. And I thought that was so interesting. She said, choice is an, an illusion. And I'm like, well, I'll say, what do they mean choice is an illusion? Well, when you know truth, choice is an illusion. Why? Because even though it's before you, when you know truth, it's not a choice for you. 
My God, my God. Some of us gonna get there. If you have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is guiding you in all truth, then guess what? What the world is offering for offering you is an illusion. Why? And it's not a it's not a choice for you because you desire because you know you are called to walk in truth. Amen. An illusion is an illusion is backed up by deception. That's why Satan and, and deception is and what and when somebody when somebody is trying to give you an illusion, they're trying to make you perceive one thing is something different. And some uh, magi ma magicians they do illusions. They want to make you think they disappeared. But watch it. And then y'all ever watch this man? Come on, y'all ever watch this? Y'all ever watch um the X the, 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 the um the tonic shows like what what X Factor? X Factor and these shows they they have magicians. And these people are really, really good in their illusions. And people be going, they got people going on tomorrow. Magic is for real. <laughs> it's really real. I believe that person actually disappeared in their box. Just because you don't know the truth, don't make it real. But see, truth will tell you. It's a tree. Truth will yeah. tell you that it's a tree. Because I don't know. Only uh, in, when I look in my when I look at my word, when the Bible said Jesus walked through him, he's the only one I seen was able to. <laughs> he was standing right there. Next day he was like, he walked, they couldn't find him. And Jesus the only one I know that the doors were closed in the upper room. And he appeared walking through the upper. And the Bible says, we know not yet what we shall become, but we shall be like him. And we shall be changed when he come from a twinkling eye from corruptible to incorruptible. Since he has not come yet, returned yet, then we are still in this corruptible body. Can I get an amen? And last time I checked, if we're in this corruptible body, it's not walking through no walls. It's not disappearing. So when I look at that trick, because why? Uh, I'm not, uh, uh, choice is not an illusion for me. Why? Because I know there's an explanation. Explan I don't know how he did the trick, but I do know it was a trick. See, when you don't know truth, you are filling in. And when you start filling in without God, mm, you, start, you start magnifying the power of Satan. You say, well, what do you mean? Read your Bible. In the book of Acts, Simon the Sorcerer, the Bible said he bewitched the great, from the greatest to the smallest. He was an illusionist. He was an illusionist. And the Bible said he fooled the greatest to the smallest. He was an illusionist. But when he saw true power, come on, somebody got to come with me today. When he saw true power, he tried to hurt you. He said, wait a minute. When he saw by the laying hands of the anointing, that by, by the laying hand, they received the anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. When he, saw, he said, oh, I don't see true power. Can I buy that? And, and they said, you know what? Your heart is wicked in the sight of God. You're trying to purchase that which is free. But do, well, why was he saying his heart was wicked? Because he, why? he wanted to handle the word deceitfully. He wanted to use the power of God to glorify himself. I'm telling you, and there's a lot of prophets and people today who are handling the word of God to see people, and you don't walk away glorifying God. You walk away being amazed at him. Mm. The apostles didn't even want that. And when the people tried to do that, they rented their clothes and told them, we are man of black pastor, glorify God. Does it make sense what I'm saying today? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I'm trying to um, understand the right? So, the anoint and okay, so it says at the bottom of page five, mm -hmm. Elijah had the anointed the priest repentance to captive Israel, and then it goes on to talk about how John had John the Baptist had this Elijah spirit anointing upon him. So the anointing is the power mm -hmm. of God to break burdens off of us. So like he he you his power breaks. Like the yoke off of our lives, but then he also uses that same power to like give people specific things. Because it says that um, Elijah had the power to, I mean, Elijah had the anointing to preach of him. Right. Elijah had anointing to, give, God gave Elijah the word and to preach 
repentance. He was anointed that when he opened his mouth and preached what God told him to preach, that that, that truth was destroying the, the power that had people in bondage at that point. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it destroyed. And I, I think I understand what your question is. Can someone be anointed for a specific task? Mm -hmm. That's what you're asking, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you think about it, the presence of God and God moving through their life at that point. Because if you notice that in the scriptures, that when those were anointed by the spirit of God, they were anointed always. But you read it for, my, read it for yourself. Was to deliver God's people. In some way or so fashion, if, if it was a small thing, it was a woman delivery, if it was a woman delivering a child, if it was, it was always the power of God to move in a manner at that point of what God, when they spoke, God backed up what they're saying, what they said, that they knew that God was present to set the captives free. Moses was anointed by God to what? To deliver his people from Egypt. Joseph. Uh, Joshua was anointed to take the people into the promised land. Now, now, but right now, to take them to the promised land. So anointed means to empower with the presence of God to fulfill God's task, but, but it's also who you are. You understand? In other words, the anointing gave identity too. And, and, and when you look at it, because the anointing gave identity to David as a king to fulfill the task of what God wanted to unite because David was the first king to actually unite all Israel as one, one, one people. That's why I'm not surprised that Jesus came under the line of David. Because David was the first king that united all 12 tribes. Saul did not unite all, when we talk about he did not unite all 12 tribes. Some of them didn't, I think it was two of them that they really wasn't really feeling Saul like that. But David anointed all 12 tribes. Kind of get what I'm saying? So, like, for instance, let me see. The, and this may sound kind of strange because when you look at it, you'll say, well, Elijah was a prophet. So was he anointed as a prophet? Answer that question would be, yes. That was, so his identity was a prophet. A prophet was what? what what's the office of prophet? Who speak the word of God? Then, you, then, you, then it may sound like, well, apostle, you sound like you're kind of like contradicting yourself because you're saying with Jesus, uh, with Jesus, uh, that would he not be anointed as a prophet? No. Why? Because they, even when they spoke about Jesus, they said, is it John the Baptist? Is he one of the prophets? No, there's one greater. He was anointed as a son, solidifying the power which the source which he operated in, which was the source of a son. You understand what I'm saying? Where So when he spoke, he spoke as a son. Connection. That's why he said, when you see me, you see the father. I only said what, say, what, say what the father say. He spoke that. Where David was anointed as a king, you know what I'm saying, over Israel. Does it make sense what I'm saying to you? So the, re you, the reason I'm trying, the reason I want us to understand this is because if you go around someone say, well, this person is anointed as a, uh, as, a, as a prophet today. No, they may walk in the office as a prophet today, but they are anointed as a son. And as a son that, 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 uh, uh, operating under the spirit of God, then they can still speak what the father tell them to speak because Jesus, who was anointed as a son, spoke as the father gave him what to say. You know what I'm saying? So that's why the Bible says in Revelation 19 that they speak under the spirit, they, they prophesy under the spirit of Christ. You know what I'm saying? Because they prophesy under the spirit of Christ. But who is Christ? The son of the living God. So they prophesy. Um, so the Holy Spirit can only bring into remembrance what Jesus Christ is. Jesus Christ is the word of God. So when you prophesy, let's say God, can, he, he's moving through you. Um, he, uh, uh, Ingrid. And when Ingrid prophesies, she's prophesying under the spirit, right? The spirit is giving her, giving her permission to prophesy the heart of God. So she is speaking, but she's still speaking as one, as a daughter or a son to the father. She's still leading them to the father. It's the relationship. There was, Jesus came to reestablish a relationship. Does it make sense? No, it's good. No, we're going to, we, 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 that's what we're here for. That's, that's what, go ahead. Okay, so um, you said that he is the anointing for you to speak his word and speak deliverance. Right. And he, everything he went about, for like whatever they was doing, it was to bring like freedom and deliverance to people. Right. So when it says um, the fire is anointing as a burden removing yoke, destroying the power of God. Um, so when that anointing falls upon like us individually, mm -hmm. right. not for like other people. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess my question would be like, how does that anointing? I, it's the presence of God. It's the power of God. But how does it break? The things that we, like, the yokes that we have around us. Okay. Our when the anointing came in the presence of God, the Bible says His Spirit 
His word, his word follows his spirit, and his spirit follows his word. Even when you study the one we read now, the word is the spirit. So the anointing, even when the anointing come and the presence come back, it, 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 it came, but it came establishing something. It came saying something. You know what I'm saying? When even when the spirit came up, watch this. Here come the spirit, like a dove upon Jesus, right? What does the father say? This is my son and whom I am well pleased. You know what I'm saying? So there was an established word with the spirit. The word goes and the spirit goes with it. God says, let there be light. But the Bible says that the spirit hovered over the darkness and the spirit operates to do the word. And so the word goes, they, they, they're, they're, they're not separate. They operate together. So when the anointing comes, um, when he, in other words, he didn't just pour oil on David. He told David what he was putting oil on for him, to be the king of Israel. You know what I'm saying? So the anointing is the power. So guess what? When God put anointing, he's anointing you with giving you understanding. Let's say God says, right now, the, 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 the quick, the spirit quick, you go, let's say you, we in this room right now, right? And next thing you know, the power of God begins to start, not begins to utter through you, and he begins to have you begin to prophesy to uh, murder. And now the spirit of God begins to, you tell you, boom, boom, you flowing, you flowing, you flowing. You flowing. That's, the, that's why you can't take no glory for that. Why? Because it's the spirit of God going through you and going to tell you what to say and move through your mouth and tell murder. And the murder I'm like, I don't know she didn't know. I know, dog, no well. Like, ain't no way in the world she knew that. And because the spirit can reveal the secrets of someone's heart, and you don't know that. Only the spirit of God knows that. And that's why no man can ever take glory. No man. And when we read about Greg and find out, the glory never goes to the person. It always goes to God. Because even the word itself is the one making you more like God. That's why you don't have to be like beating yourself up. Come into his rest. The rest what? Of the word of God that's doing what? That he's watching over to do what? To produce in you that which he has sent it to do. The Bible says he watches over his word, that it shall not return void, that it shall prosper. Your job is to believe the word and rest in knowing that God got, God got me. God is producing, he, 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 he's producing in me. His, his word will not return. His word that he has sent is for When God said, let there be light, did the sun help him? Or did the sun become the sun? You know what I'm saying? And the spirit of God created that. Because faith, what's it? The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. It ain't there. There was no sun. It was the darkness. But when God said, let there be light, light appeared. And then God began to divide the light from the day. God and the spirit of God began to move and to create what God is saying by his word. So what has God said to me? And that's why when we understand this, when God, it was God who said, let us create man. Man ain't have nothing. I want y'all to get this. Man had nothing to do with this. It was God who said, it was God and the word. In the beginning was the word, right? Guess what? In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, God created. Put them together. In the beginning, God created by the word, by the word, right? It was, in the Bible says, all things were made by him and for him without nothing made. When God created man, man had nothing to do with that. It was God who said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. Amen. The Bible said, God formed man out of dust and he grew into him. So if God, he didn't, he didn't need no man help to do what he was doing. Amen. And man would have been walking all right until Satan walked into the garden. And when Satan walked in the garden, the first thing he challenged, he ain't challenged man. He challenged what God said. He challenged man to be, the only thing that his challenge to man was to simply see if man would be obedient to what God told him. Yeah, we got to grab that. Satan challenged to man was only to see if man was obedient to what God had told him. That's what he was telling Cain. He said, Cain, if thou do it good, Thou shall receive good. Amen. If Cain would have just been obedient to what God and did good, what would have been good at that point? Accept his punishment. Accept the fact. What would, would have been good? Cain, if, what would have been good for Cain? If Cain would have just simply said, you know what, God, forgive me. I should have brought when you told me when you had, when you didn't accept my, when you did not accept my offering, instead of my continence falling and me acting like I got a problem. I should have said, God, you know what? I apologize. I'm sorry. And I should have done. And I should know bringing you something, offering you that you, who you, who are you, who you are, God, who you are. I must actually bring you, I, me even thinking to bring you something less than my very best shows that I don't really understand the magnitude of who you are. And as father, it shows me as a father that you will correct. What God shows me in Genesis it don't get it twisted. God will correct you. 
He will tell you in Revelation. Let me tell you how I learned something about Revelation. In the book of Revelation, in the seven churches, I noticed something about God. He'll tell you that you're doing something good. But that's because he told you that you did seven things good don't mean he's going to override the eight thing you did wrong. Because that's what he did with the churches in, 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 in Revelation. He said, I like you. If you go read, I had to study that. I started reading the church. He was like, I like you. That's, I like when you did this. And I like the fact that you had a problem with the Nicodemus. I, I, I that you hated him like that. But, so that tell me God will be like, yeah. And some of us think, no, God won't never. I'm doing all this right. I don't believe that God will come correct me about one thing. I'm, he's going to just override this. I have, I have a word for you and me tonight. No, he's not going to override a little letter. Because God understands a little cancer can grow to kill the whole body. Doesn't make sense. So when the anoint, the anointing of the word of God, the power of God is sent forth to produce what God designed in the beginning. Amen. So Jesus is that anointed one to go what? He is the image and the likeness of God. These are, when you see me, you see the father. He has been sent to produce what God has, what the word was designed to produce from the beginning. And that is man in his image and likeness. That's why I, Sometimes I'm amazed at how we forget that we don't understand the purpose of the word. If you don't understand the purpose of what that means, you never understood what was really initially being established because God does not just say, well, you know what? Let me tell you what God didn't do. God didn't say, well, I really wanted man to be in my image. And I really wanted man to be after my likeness. But since they didn't do it, I'm just going to trash my word, forget my word, and I just settle for whatever they want to be, whatever they want to do. I just settle for that because, you know, I can't really, I can't produce what I said I can produce. Y'all believe that? I don't believe that. So God came down in the flesh, came down being able to feel everything in the flesh that we feel, that we would be without excuse, that we cannot walk in this flesh in a way that pleases God. And when we find ourselves struggling in the flesh, in which we will, okay, amen. amen. He says, the anointed one in the presence of God will help us. He says, you got an advocate in Christ Jesus. Come boldly before the throne room of grace in your time of need. And I will help you. I will help you defeat. I will teach you through my word and produce my word for you because I gave you dominion over the earth, not Satan. I gave you dominion over every creepy thing. I gave you power over all the works of the enemy and nothing should hurt you. And I'm not a man, I am not a liar or the son of man. If I said I gave you power over all the works of the enemy and nothing should hurt you, if I didn't mean it, I wouldn't have said it. The reason why you and I may be struggling with the power that he has given us in certain situations because we're struggling with the mindset of what we were raised with versus the mindset that we're, that we're being conformed into. We're being conformed into the mind. Let the same mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. And I promise you, Christ's mind, he don't think that the enemy has ever defeated him. This is the same Jesus that God told you and I to have this mindset that, 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 that never trembled at the enemy when the enemy came at him. Amen. And this is the spirit of God working, moving in you, in I. And, and even, in, even in the process where I was going to, even in this process where it says, but, but I mean, verse uh, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 18. But we all with open faces, behold as the glad, as a mirror, the glory of the Lord. We all with open faces, hold the glory of the Lord. We all with open faces, hold the mirror of the Lord. The word, what word? The one that we turn to. Remember the verses before? The one we turn to, amen? The one that we turn to that's freeing us. We all, with, oh, he is the image now. He is the image that we are all, that when we turn from the world, we have turned to a new image. And you know when you look in the mirror, you're like, you're trying. And now the mirror that you're looking in is now creating in you the image that you were designed to be before. The word is creating in you the image. So therefore, now I want y'all to understand something. The Bible says the, war, the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit wars against the He tell you and I that you won't have a war. He told you. When you break loose, there's a fight. Now, what you got to find out, what is it if the fight worth fighting for? Or you, do you, you have to fight to be free. Let, let a man work out his own salvation. You got to fight. What am I fighting? I'm fighting with the truth against that lattice inside of me. 
that lock inside of me tell me I'm just a little black girl, a little black boy. I got to tell me I'm nobody, I'm insignificant. But the truth said that you are a royal priesthood, that you are a holy nation. The truth said that God, that you were in this world, but you're no longer of this world. And the truth said, I have sanctified you through my word. My word is truth. Amen. And now the truth said, I abide in you and me and my father are one with you. And now you have, now you can say greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world for he has overcome the world. So guess what? What's in the world? Lust of the flesh when flesh come at you. Yes, my flesh want to have some sex. Can we get real over here? Yes, my flesh want to get drunk. To, yes, my flesh wants to crave the things that it came out of. But the spirit inside me, what spirit? The spirit of truth that's guiding me into being what? The image in the likeness of God has given me power over my flesh. Does that make sense? That's the anointing. That's the presence of God. Fulfilling what God's purpose, his glory in your life. And when we teach this anointing and see the anointing, now I want y'all to say something, in the power and the presence of God has many different gifts. Amen? It releases gifts of tongues. It has many gifts. It has gifts and it has, but it's all utilizing for the purpose of God, not for self. And that's where people are getting it twisted. The power over it, this, the anointing on your life and the spirit of God is working together for the good of the Lord. But it's what? For his purpose. And what is his purpose? To overcome his king, he was what Jesus was born for, manifested for this purpose to destroy the works of the enemy. Because why it was the enemy that brought the separation back from the beginning. All we got to do is go to Genesis and realize our revelation is, is a conquering of what enemy did in Genesis. And now God has a people to himself in a new Jerusalem worshiping God. And God, there's no more tears that dealt in you know, all the things that came from the lie and sin has now been restored through Jesus Christ. And there's a new city and there's children and there's no death, there's no tears. So all those things came connected to sin in the fallen state of man. But now you have risen and you have risen with him. And now because you have risen with him, you are, you are on the battlefield right now. Why? Because you know the truth and the truth that you know has set you free. And what God wants to do with you now is send you to the as a sheep among wolves. Why? To bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. But see this false gospel is that God has anointed me and I'm gaining wealth. Well, silver and gold I have not, but that's what I do have. Don't believe that. Like, I don't need no money to cost you to cost the, to cost the dead to rise up. I don't need no money to cost the lame to walk. I need what I have. What do I have? The spirit of God abiding in me. Well, I'm trying to be funny, but it was Peter them saying, not me. Serve and go, we have not. But that which we do have, we give unto you. Rise in the name of Jesus. See, watch what, let me read this to you. Let me read this to you. In whom, the God, in whom the God of this world has blinded him, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants. For Jesus' sake. See, watch this. For God has commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the glory of God in the face of our Jesus. God is God. You, you, you that light. The the, 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 gospel, the pastor, the teacher was always, their job was always to equip you. Their job was always to say to you, go do what I have done even greater. Their job, it wasn't even about the gifts, it was about you becoming, knowing who you are, and allowing the gifts to flow that God may be glorified, that they will know God is present, that you can give them Jesus. But we begin to make church about everything else. And the deceiver has gone forth and that has deceived many. See, let me, listen. The Bible says it rained on the just as well as unjust. Y'all with me? You can gain, you can become a millionaire without even serving God. You can. And if they tell anybody tell you that that's not true, that's not, say it, it actually can't tell you that's not true because there are many people who are millionaires today who don't serve God. You, your, your natural gifts to dance, some of the greatest dancers who are millionaires, I mean, getting paid, what's your name? 
They don't believe in no God. They believe that their gifts is their God. It is their gifts that make their notoriety. It is their gifts that get make their identity in their family. We call them stars. God called them fallen stars. Wow, fallen stars have no light. We call them celebrities. God called them lost. Because they have put their faith in something that cannot sustain them. What is a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Be careful of the deception of success. Be careful of the, the deception of success. Now watch how people will interpret this. See, people who are blind and deceived, they would perceive that I'm speaking against success. No, I understand that God, um, when you look at some of the men and women of God, they became, uh, if you look at Abraham, Abraham was perceived to be, I would look at him as being a great businessman. Abraham had to be, come on, he, he was not only, he had to be a great man, he had sheep. And, he, 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 I mean, you can't have all the wealth that he had and not really be good at business. You know what I'm saying? But his purpose was bigger than his so-called so evaluation of success. His purpose was to come from among his family and to find the promised land, to find what was promised to him. When you begin to believe that your success is your purpose, in this time you have been deceived. Because that means you don't know the word that was given to the sons and what God is really doing. Or why did he bring us back? Because Jesus made it perfectly clear to his disciples, I'm coming back. And in the scripture, he says things like this. I'm going to come like a thief in the night. And if I find you out of position, you're going to be in trouble. So the gospel that brings salvation the goal, the end goal of that is eternity, but to dwell with him, not here. This is not the promised land. Read your Bible. Read Revelation. There's a new Jerusalem. And those when he come back, those who, those, 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 those who in the white linen, they're going to come back with him. And, and when he come back, those who are dead shall be raised up first. And those who are those who are asleep shall be rise up first, and those who remain. And he said, on the twinkling eye, they shall be changed from corruptible to incorruptible. So you didn't serve. So what you received was not about what you were getting here. Just like when Abraham to Abraham, oh y'all gotta get this. Abraham, what he received could not, oh y'all gotta get this, could not have been about the promise. Why? Because the wealth that Abraham had when he was with his with Lot and all of them. How many of you know that Abraham lost a lot of that wealth when they went to Egypt? Y'all be, better read your Bible. If Abraham's whole purpose was to gain wealth, and it was not in the wealth that he gained was not what was not what was not uh, the promise was not bigger than the wealth. Then why, when Josh, when Joseph, when no, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let's go to the go down to the line that the wealth that they had that was passed out, and they all gained this wealth. Why, and I'm, I'm, I'm going down, why when the storm, and I know I'm talking about Isaac, but I want you to see the connection of how they all were businessmen and they gained wealth and this and that. But if it was about the wealth, then when the famine came for seven years, Egypt, why did it affect them too? Meaning that all that, that Jacob, who, who, who became Jacob, who became Israel, all that he had in the wealth, if his identity was about wealth, then when he had been mad at God through the famine because they lost all their stuff too, and they had to come to a pagan city, mm -hmm. Egypt, come on y'all, but God had already arranged a way to escape from what the world was going to take away from them, but their identity was a problem, and what? And Israel got stuck in Egypt, in a pagan city that was you, and watch what he says when they got stuck. The Bible says, the Bible says that the king, the new king did not remember Joshua. He didn't have no, it was Joshua right there. Um, Joseph. He did not remember Joseph. So there was another king born, but that makes sense. Why? And now this new king that was born who did not remember Joseph, he became a, began to, now watch it, the Bible says that Israel was multiplying in such a high rate, meaning they were increasing as their children was in such a high rate that even the king began to tell them murder the babies. You know what I'm saying? The king, the king began to move in a way that 
Israel, he, he wanted to get rid of, he, he began to, the nursemaids, he said, what I want you doing is a son, baby. He was trying to stone Israel. But the problem was all that was going on there, Israel had forgotten that was not their promise. And I believe today that the sons and daughters have forgotten this is not their promise. And they're sitting around talking about, well, how come COVID-19 is bothering us and affecting us? Well, last time I checked, guess what? The children of Israel were affected by the, by the famine also that attacked. Woke them up and scared them up, didn't you? To get them back on the road, get them back focused on this is not your promise. Don't get caught with them. Yes, what's down here going to affect you, but you have a greater promise. And then he had to raise up like a Mo he had to raise up a Moses. Am I right or wrong? But then Moses said, it was Moses said there will be another prophet, such as Moses. Well, he was a prophet, he was a son. There will be another like me. Why? Gonna do the same thing I'm doing. What? Gonna deliver you. Why? In the promise he has. He said, don't let your heart be stuck in these things down here. But let your heart be in those things which are above that rust and moat and the thief cannot steal. He said, don't let your heart be attached to things down here because they can be taken. But understand that you are on a journey like Israel was. And as I shook Israel because they were in Egypt, and I promise you, America is Egypt. America has become Egypt. It is wicked. America is wicked. It is extremely wicked and becoming even more wicked. It is a nation that says one nation under God, but yet it has created many gods. It is a nation that says undivided, but it is greatly divided by God. It is a nation that murder is paid for financial gain and prosperity. It is a nation that has churches that preach a gospel about what you gain and not who you become. It is a nation that said we have come to an evolution. We know. God, we have evolved beyond you. We believe we can marry who we want to marry. We can come and covenant who we want to covenant. Cover, and we will call it love. And God says, I call it a lie. And only those who and who will believe you and the pastors and the teachers who are confirming this, he said, they are not mine. I don't care that they're in a church. I care not that they have a collar around their neck. I do not know them. I don't know why. They do not speak what I say. They do not confirm my word. It's just the truth. And God says, that's okay, because I'm standing. He said, I got it. He said, because I don't shake America. My children won't realize. Just like he had to say, if I don't shake. Do you know we have become a slave? Just like the children of Israel became a slave, they became a slave to uh, Egypt. We have become a slave to the American system. We have. The church, too. The women in the church. You know, when a mother, let me give an example. A woman in the church, when she stay home, when she say, I'm going to stay home and take care of my children, even people at the church frown at her. So you think it's just, think, you think it's something wrong with wanting to raise your children? I'm not saying you're I'm good. But if she choose that, you think there's something wrong with that? But see, well, we, well, let me tell you what we were bamboozled. We were bamboozled when people began to say this. It was my generation, but the generation before, I'm going to give my children something I never had. Hmm. Now, let me tell you what Satan did. So mom began to go out the house and work. But now mom only went out the house work because she wanted to make extra money to get ahead. But let me tell you what the world system said. Now that we got mom out the house, mm, let me tell you what we're going to do because the only way we can get to their children, we got to get mom out the house. So we're going to get mom out the house. So mom, did, mom went to work, not intentionally to go to work. She went to work because it got, things got kind of bad. But then you know what this world system did? They raised the prices. Mom. So now mom don't mom has to go work. Why? To even afford a roof over the head. Well, we feel like that. We feel like that. We feel like we're both part of And now guess who's raising the children? MTV. BET. Lion demons. Lion, lion, yes, they are demons. The demon of lust. That, that comes in the form of entertainment. The demon of perversion. Mm -hmm. the deep. And now the TV shows say to our children, yeah, when your mama don't give you what you want, throw a fit. Cry, throw up. When they don't give you what you want, since they went to work to give you what they want, when they don't give what you want, throw a fit. And now we say it's natural for our children to grow up and be rebellious. But the scripture said, bring up a child and where to go and when it's always should not apply. Hmm. And now Satan said, I'm going to do the greatest deception. 
I'm gonna create a message called prosperity. And I'm gonna raise up false prophets. Yes, I said it, false prophets. That will begin to say stuff like this. Get in the $50 line. Get in the $100 line. In other words, buy. But last time I found out somebody tried to buy the Holy Spirit, Jesus called them, the word says they were wicked. Because when you're talking about healing, you're talking that the healing comes from the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. So if you're trying to, that's the same thing that Simon the Sorcerer tried to do. He tried to buy the Holy Spirit that brings forth the healing and the deliverance. So when you tell somebody to get in the $50 line, you're telling them that they have to buy the Holy Spirit to get their deliverance. Hmm. But you got it free. So now you're telling me I need to pay you to prophesy. Oh, you, isn't that the spirit of divination? For the woman who had the spirit of divination, why didn't the spirit say she has? The Bible says she moved with the, she moved with the gift to gain money for the one who owned her. And yet we so blind. We run to and from to these false prophets and they prophesy you millions of dollars and husbands and houses and cars. Isn't it funny they prophesy you the very things God told you to have no thought for? That now the church is no longer excited about people getting saved. They're more excited about who you're marrying. And now the wedding has to, now the wedding has to look like some Hollywood. The weddings, oh my God. They try now, people like it look like some they would it don't like they mimicking God in these new weddings, the people in these weddings. It's like they mimic in the world. Let me show you me. Let me show you this. They got all kind of stuff that looks like what is it? It ain't about glorifying God, it's about glorifying God. Matter of fact, in the scripture, when Jesus had a wedding, he said, let me see how you dress. People dress to come into a wedding. They got on a white dress, but all they show is flesh. Ain't no holiness even in the dress they choose. It's just self, 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 all self. That, that's the great deception. To turn you to self, but it's not new. It's not new. That's all he did with Eve. He simply turned Eve to self. And told Eve, you don't need God. You can have the power. God just don't want you. He knows you can be God by yourself. So now we got the five percenters. We got we got movie stars that talk about Egypt. Isn't it funny they talk about Egypt and the false gods like Ra, where they really want to be a god to themselves. And when they are god to themselves, they have no standard. See, when you're god to yourself, you can still get high. When you're god to yourself, you can still misuse and lie and cheat on people. When you're god to yourself, you can still do everything that is wicked and deceitful. And your success, your ideal success is a means that God is with you. So now God is with you because you got a Grammy. So God is with you because you got a gift and they gave you a statue. That sounds a little bit like in the days of, um, what's the name, King um, Babylon? He said when they built a statue and they said when you hear the twenty, so you, 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 you I'm just, I know we, people don't want to hear this, but it's the truth. Because God has called us into his presence. Why? To unexposed, exposed to deception. Why? Because some of us in this room, including myself, and certain, we got to repent. We got to repent. And it's not that God don't want you to use your gift, but your gift without his heart, your gift without his heart, it's just serving you. Yes, you can be a great engineer. Your gift without his heart, you will engineer some things so wicked, so full of filth and unclean and unholy. Somebody made those devices in them sex or clubs. Somebody make the, the you know, somebody make a computer. The computer is a great, but isn't it funny? Everything that becomes designed, you can, all, you, you can see the war. In anything that begins to design in the phone, the phone is a great design. All you got to do is by look through somebody's phone, you can tell who they serve. 
because whatever you, whatever's designed, you're gonna use it according to what's in your heart. Some people phone if you go through it, you're gonna find nothing but porn. Filthy videos, wickedness, unclean conversation, text of un, un and then some people gonna go through, you're gonna find holy music, you're gonna find conversations to represent. See, some people won't even let you pick up their phone because if you go through their phone, you're gonna, so this is how you use this. You use it according to your heart. Some people phone, you will find nothing but gossip on it. Who they talking about, who they done slandered. If you go to their Texas, who they done slandered, who they done talked about, they, they phone is a witness against them. Amen. Some of us, our movie collection is a witness against us. Some of us, who if I ask you for your music, And then people try to, it don't matter. How does a holy God like unholy music? My Bible says, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it in the name of Jesus Christ and the thanks to the Father. Say, Lord, clean me up. Shake everything. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus and shake everything that's unlike you. God, I want to submit under your anointing. As your anointing and your word is producing in me who I'm called to be. And this is not condemnation. Why? Because you go up from I even love the word. That's why y'all noticed the word when he said, y'all love this part when he says, that's what he says. He says, I said, but we were all with open faces, behold, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord that you have turned to is changing you from glory to glory into the image of God. You've been changed. Just look at somebody say, I'm being changed. Now and don't, and don't beat yourself up. You being changed. I promise you. You, I, I guarantee you. I'm looking at some of y'all. You not where you used to be. Amen. I know. How many of us? You see some fruit in your life. Mm -hmm. I don't curse like I used to curse. I man, I will curse you out. So, I'm, but I feel I can see. I can feel my change. I can, I'm getting anybody getting convicted by some things you used to do. I, you know, I, um, I, I mean, I, I like, I like sci-fi, so sci-fi movie. I like, I, I noticed that I started watching sci-fi movie. Then, if I watch a sci-fi movie, then I'm like, I even, cause see, what happens is you can get your, your conscience can become. You gotta watch too. And it, that's why I, I can watch a movie, and it's got that much. I don't, I don't like profanity, so if it ain't got that much profanity, I, I override that. I might, even, um, but when it's like, don't no flip, I can't watch that. Why? Cause God don't want to watch it. It ain't you, the spirit in you don't want to watch. Because then next thing you know, you're sleeping and you hear the cursing. We're trying to creep and you wonder, oh, oh man, I'm cursing, I'm throwing curse words all in my Where that came from? God said, boy, watch what you let me in. Because it's going to want to break out. Watching movies, man, your flesh, you know, come on, you know when it's the wrong perversion. Your body will tell you when it's the wrong perversion. Because why? Your body will start acting when you start seeing something. It'll start, it'll start letting you know something, a sex scene from happening, this something, your body will let you know, especially if you if you ever had that spirit, if you ever had the spirit of lustful perversion, when that movie come on, you said, and your body will start looking for that movie. Oh, I know, I'm, let me go to Netflix. Because Netflix ain't number four. Soft porn, hard help them. Let me go there. Because I know I can see some next people on Netflix. Feeding that appetite. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and then once you get off, you crying while I watch that. I know I wasn't supposed to watch that. God help me. God be like, boy, I'm whoop your butt. He know you in a struggle. That's why he said, he, you, see the, you see the grace in the scripture. He could have just said change. He said change from glory to good. He's telling you, I'm bringing you up. Come on, somebody say, he's bringing me up. He's bringing me up. He's bringing me up. What glory? The spirit of God. The, the, the anointing, the presence of God is bringing me from glory to glory. The God's word being fulfilled in me, taking me more. What is God's glory? The manifested word, his word, taking me from glory to glory. I notice I don't talk the same. When you see me, you see the word. I know we, we uh, God wanted to go in this area. I don't know the anointing. Because I think before we get to the glory, we got to get, we want to get, we got, I think God really dealing with this anointing because it, we got to understand that anointing. the anointing is the presence of God, the empowerment of God to break through. It is God. But what is it? But it's God's spirit. They're not separate. The anointing can't, the anointing, what is the oil? The oil is the spirit. Amen. And, and, they, and David, David, the oil was symbolic. But in, in, in Jesus, it's the spirit. Because watch this. The Bible says when Jesus, y'all got to get this. The Bible, let me say it. 
Who the man said I am? He says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When Jesus was baptized, the Bible says the Spirit came upon him. That's the, and when the Spirit, the Bible, the Bible said, This is my Son in whom I am well speak. It is the Spirit of God that brings the anointing. That's why the Bible says, If you have not my Spirit, you are none of mine. Because you need the Spirit. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, brings all things that guide you in all truth. And the truth that you're guided in destroy yokes. And God will send that truth in the midst of lies. And you're going to stand on that truth. Amen. Amen. And they're going to say to you, girl, how is it that you ain't out there getting your groove on? Why you ain't, what you, isn't that, girl, I'm smart. Hmm, I'm, I'm fulfilled. I don't, I don't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't, mm -mm. Oh, but why you why you so polite? It's, it's just why you ain't you ain't hitting that on the side. You ain't got no leg on. No, I don't roll like that. Why? It ain't you. It ain't you. Your flesh will roll like that in a minute. Your conscience, you ain't got no good conscience. But that's why Paul said, "We through the word appeal to every man's conscience." It is the word that is that is awakening your conscience to the things that please God. Amen. Are there any questions? Any question wrong? Did I answer your question? And remember this. I mean, that's why you read this book. They are not separate. The, 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 the presence of God is the presence of God, the praising of God in that presence, the anointing. That's why I, I thought when I was reading, I thought it was so funny. If you notice, he'll say, then even when he goes to the glory, he said, My presence is in my glory. And he says, My presence is in my glory. Then he says, the anointing is my presence. The presence of God is captured. We are, we see, sometimes we think the presence of God is like we have to conquer it up. Ah, oh, the presence. I think, like, no, actually, just acknowledge that he, oh, he present right now. Especially when God, when, when, when you being, when you sitting there, when two or three are gathered in the midst, when you start talking about God, he present. He present. In your car, he present. And that truth you speaking, it's, it has anointed power behind it. When you start talking about, you know what? When you talk to your girl, when you start talking to somebody, you, with somebody, you're talking to them about, you know, how to, you know, how to uh, not backbite, not to slander somebody, that's the presence of God. Because in your flesh, it is okay for you to backbite somebody. Man, that very thought that you don't think it's good to slander somebody behind their back, that came from the spirit of God. That's God's word. And when somebody received that word, that word has the power to destroy what the yoke. What burden? The burden that you feel now to respond and backslam in somebody. And it goes deep in to show why you made it. Why do I backslam? Because I really don't feel like nobody. And when I, I really feel it's significant for the people who gave me, why my mom made me feel, or how people made me feel. So when I talk about somebody else, it makes me feel good. When I slander other people, it makes me feel good. Why? Because I just feel like I feel important because they're because they're not important. Because everything got a root to it. That's why the anointing destroys the yoke. It goes to the root. Mm -hmm. Any word? Any questions? All hearts clear? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we can't do anything without you. It is written that if the branch be not connected to the vine, it can bear no fruit. And it is also written that when we bear much fruit, we bring glory to you. My God, I love you, God. You say when we bear much fruit, we bring glory to you. And we know that the fruit are the fruit of the Spirit. And you say that you will prune the vine, that we may produce more fruit. That we may walk in what you have designed us to be before the foundation of the world. Even the man on the right-hand side of the of Jesus. People say, well, he didn't do nothing. That brother went to preaching on the right. You got to even go back and remember, he went to telling the man on the left-hand side, if you knew who it was, even in the midst of his pain and dying on the cross for wrongdoing, he was able to see your glory and said unto you, Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. So that means we can be in the worst situation and yet still have an opportunity to see your glory. Mm -hmm. And say unto you, Lord, remember us before as you enter into your kingdom. 
And Jesus said unto the man, this day you shall join me in paradise. Letting us know that the flesh was about to be buried, but the spirit was about to do, the, the spirit was about to get this. So Lord, we thank you that we are spiritual. For you said it would, the hour has now come that the worshiper shall worship you, the true worshiper shall worship you in spirit and truth. We are those who worship you in spirit and truth. Your word is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto your hand. And your word is taking us from glory to glory to glory. And let us never, ever handle your word to see. But let us preach not ourselves, but we preach Christ Jesus and ourselves a servant. For you said the greatest among you shall be the servant. So you desire for us to strive for greatness, to have a heart to serve, to esteem others higher than ourselves. God crucified his flesh. Teach us to deny his flesh. That we may bring glory to you in the spirit. We thank you, God that your word is not returning void. We thank you that your word is being fulfilled in our lives. We thank you, God, that your word is prospering in each and every life that's under this voice today. And that you are taking them from glory to glory to glory. And everything that is unlike you, God, is being stirred up and shaken off, God. That all that is remaining is you, God. Because we are those who build our house upon the rock. And you said that when the wise men build this house upon the rock, when the winds are going to sin against it, it remains standing. So we are those who remain standing. We are those who will remain standing. That people can see the glory of the Lord. We thank you, O gracious and glorious God, that you are in the midst of us right now, Lord. You're bringing every thought in the alignment of your word. We are what you say. We are what you have called us to be. And this is not our home. But while we're here, Father God, we, we will be as soldiers, good soldiers, Father, not being entangled in the cares of heaven as well, but seeking to please who, you who have called us into battle. For you have told us, let us work while it is day. But when night comes, no man can work. You have said unto us that the harvest is great, but the labor is free. Let us pray to the king of the harvest for more labor. So we pray that you will begin to rise up more laborers, God. This is the prayer that we come to you before. This is the prayer that we say when two or three, when two or two, when, when two touch and agree. This is where we touch and agree, Father God, that there will be more laborers that will be that will rise up, Father God, and be concerned about the things that you are concerned about. We thank you that we shall lack no good thing, God. But you shall provide all our needs according to your riches and your glory. Lord, we thank you. And let us not let us not be as Israel was that when they were delivered out of Egypt to go get the promise that you have established over their lives according to your word. That when storms and situations occurred, that they would often find themselves saying it was better, I don't know if I said they both will see. Crying out, it was better when things got hard or difficult. Crying out, it was better when we were back in Egypt. Let us not be as those, Father God, that began to cry. It was better when I was able to go to the club. It was better when I had a man. It was better when my flesh was satisfied. The very thing you told us to deny ourselves and pick up our cross and follow you. Let us not turn back and say it was better in Egypt. but let us be those who endure to the end. Let us be those who say that we are well able, that we see ourselves as your sons and daughters, not as grasshoppers, that we are confident in you who have begun to go works in us, that you are faithful to keep us until you return. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen.